Hello and welcome to this free preview lecture series of my on-demand AP Electrical and Computer Exam Preparation course. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Kirchhoff's current law, which in addition to the Kirchhoff's voltage law and Ohm's law can be used to practically solve any given circuit. Before we dive into the content, I would really appreciate if you could like this video, click the subscribe button and the bell icon if you haven't already done so. Hello and welcome to this lecture on the topic of Kirchhoff's current law, which is a subsection of circuit analysis. Kirchhoff's current law, KCL. KCL states that the sum of current in a complete electric circuit is equal to zero. Mathematically, at any node in a circuit, the sum of current that is entering the node should be equal to the sum of current that is leaving the node. So let's take a look at this example. We have this sort of a junction at crossroads. So we have this current, this current, and this current entering the node. So all of these three currents added together should be equal to this current I out, which is leaving the node. KCL is simply based on the law of conservation of charge. Let us take a look at an example involving Kirchhoff's current law. So we have this circuit which is given to us and we are being asked to calculate the voltage Vx that appears across the 20 ohm resistor in this circuit. And we are being asked to use KCL in order to solve this circuit. So first things first, you have to recognize that Vx is actually the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor. Let us denote two nodes, node A and node B. So the voltage at node A is called Va and voltage at node B is called Vb. So Vx is the difference between Va and Vb. Okay, so Va minus Vb. Another thing that you can note over here is that Vb is actually equal to 10 volts. Although there is no ground indicated, in this circuit, you can assume a virtual ground because at this node, all of these nodes are basically, it's a common node. So you can consider it as a virtual ground. So once you consider it as a virtual ground, then you can clearly see that Vb will be equal to 10 volts. So we can write a KCL at node A, okay? And when we write the KCL at node A, we have to keep track of the currents that are entering into the node and the currents that are leaving the node. So you can make a judgment call in terms of the direction of currents. So it's pretty obvious that the 0.5 amp current source is going to be injecting current into this node, okay? Similarly, the current that is passing through the 20 ohm resistor, I've assumed that it is entering the node because it is backed by a 10 volt voltage source. So when you have a power source connected, okay, then obviously the power source will be pushing current out of it, right? So current will be entering out of this positive terminal. So it is safe to assume that the direction of current through the 20 ohm resistor will be like this, okay? So that leaves us with only one branch, which is the 30 ohm resistor branch. And since current is entering into the node from the 0.5, amp source and the current is entering from the 20 ohm resistor as well then it is safe to assume that the 30 ohm resistor uh, current will actually have this direction so once you establish this current direction and again even if your current directions are assumed to be incorrect you will just see a negative sign appearing um, across it so it's not a big deal you just have to be consistent Okay, so using these current directions, we can see that the current passing through the 30 ohm resistor would be Va minus zero. So Va is the voltage that appears on this side of the 30 ohm resistor, and zero is the voltage that appears on this side. So remember, we've assumed a virtual ground over here. So Va minus zero divided by 30 ohms is equal to the current that passes through the 20 ohm resistor and the current that enters into this node A by the current source. So the current entering is 0.5 amps and the current passing through the 20 ohm resistor is simply Vb minus Va divided by 20 ohms. And we already know that Vb is equal to 10 volts. Remember the current will always go from a, poten a higher potential to a lower potential. So I'm assuming that the 10 volt voltage will basically 
because of this direction of current so we are going from vb to va okay so that's why we are going to do vb minus va so from vb to va okay and then divided by the resistance so your resistance is 20 ohms vb is 10 volts and va is this so again all i've done over here and it's important to understand this piece all i've done over here is that i've collected the terms okay so these are the two terms this is the current going in okay so this is the sum of current that is entering and this is the sum of current that is leaving the node okay so the sum of current entering the node should be equal to the sum of current leaving the node and after that it's simple math so you can solve this equation for va and you will end up with one amp so we collected everything on the left hand side on the right hand side we had one amp and when we solved it for va uh, we have 12 volts and we are not done yet because we have to calculate the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor remember the voltage across 20 ohm resistor is va minus vb so it is 12 volt minus 10 volts which is 2 volts let us now take a look at this example this circuit looks slightly complicated but when you systematically look at it it's not that difficult again we are being asked to calculate voltage vx across the 2 ohm resistor so this is our 2 ohm resistor and vx is the voltage that is appearing across it okay and in this case it's given in the problem statement or in the circuit diagram that this node is actually a grounded node okay so vx is the voltage across 2 ohm resistor and we have a current source and we have a voltage source to take care of so vx is the unknown voltage you can clearly see that vx is equal to va minus vb in this case vb is this voltage which is equal to ground and this is node a okay so the positive terminal is va and the negative terminal is vb the negative terminal as you can see is grounded so we call it zero volts so vx is simply equal to va which is equal to vx so we can write the kcl at vx okay vx and va are basically the same thing when i say i'm writing a kcl at vx i'm basically writing a kcl at this point okay so you can see that we have a current source so the current source is injecting current into this node and at the same time we have a voltage source so whatever current is being injected by the voltage source will actually be in this direction i think it's common sense and then the sum of these two currents will be equal to the current that is leaving this node and that happens to be the current that will flow through the 2 ohm resistor so we can set up our kcl equation like this so we have this is the sum of current that is entering so i'll call this i in and it has to be equal to i out sum of all the currents leaving so the current entering the first one is pretty simple 4 amps by the current source and then we have 10 volts minus vx divided by 4 amps again if you look at it i'm assuming the direction of the current from top to bottom okay so this is the direction of the current through the 4 amp so current will flow from higher voltage to lower voltage the higher voltage in this case happens to be 10 volt the lower voltage happens to be vx okay so 10 volt minus vx divided by the resistance and the resistance is what 4 ohms and on the right hand side of the equation we have to set up the current that is leaving the node and the current that is leaving the node happens to be vx minus 0 volts okay so this is vx and this is 0 volt divided by 2 ohms then it's just a matter of solving this equation uh, rearranging and solving it for vx when you rearrange and solve it for vx you'll find that vx has a value of 8.6 volt so 8.6 volt is appearing across this 2 ohm resistor and we were able to determine it by using kcl let us now take a look at a practice problem from the study guide in this problem we are being asked to calculate the current that is passing through the 5 kilo ohm resistor in the circuit so this is the 5 kilo ohm resistor we have two voltage sources to take care of and we need to calculate what is the current that is passing through this 5 kilo ohm resistor so again we can use kcl to solve this problem and we can observe that each of these voltage sources is going to be pumping current out of it okay so 10 volt voltage source is going to be pumping current out of it so that is into this node okay and similarly the 5 volt voltage source is going to be pumping current out of the voltage source into this particular node once the current from these two sources arrive at this node then obviously it is going to find an exit point and it will 
exit this node through the 5 kilo ohm resistor. So these are the directions of the current that are intuitive. Again, you don't have to worry about being right about these directions. As long as you keep track of the sign of the polarity, you can always readjust them at the end. So at this particular node, if you were to write the KCL, then this KCL would look like this. So we have 10 minus V. So V is the voltage at this point. So 10 minus V. So we have 10 volts over here. This is the higher potential. So 10 volt minus V divided by 10 kilo ohm. So that would give us the current that is passing through the 10 kilo ohm resistor in this direction. And similarly, we have current entering from the 5 volt uh, voltage source as well. So that would be 5 minus V. So 5 is a higher voltage and V is a lower voltage. So 5 minus V divided by 2 kilo ohm. So that will give us this current. So these two currents are your summation of I in. What is your I out? Your I out is simply this voltage V minus 0 volts divided by 5 kilo ohm. Once you've correctly set up the KCL equation, the next steps are pretty simple because you just have to solve the equation for V and you can do that by rearranging the equation. You'll find that V is equal to 4.375 volts. Again, in this case, we were able to determine the current passing through this particular resistor by using KCL. And in order to make good use of KCL, you have to be careful with your assumptions. Okay, keep be consistent with your assumption. If you're assuming the current to be entering this node and this current to be entering this node and this current to be leaving this node, you have to make sure that the voltage differences that you set up in the new in the numerator, right? So this voltage in the numerator, the voltage difference that you're setting up in the numerator, it tells me that the current is flowing from the 10 volt to this particular node, which I'm indicating as V. Similarly, this numerator voltage difference tells me that the flow of current is from this voltage source to this node. Okay, if you were to write this as V minus 5 divided by 2 kilo ohm, then this basically means that the current is flowing from this V to the 5 volt battery. Okay, so you have to have a practical sense of what um, these differences mean, and um, then you will be able to solve any circuit with KCL with ease. Now there are some circuits we will see in the next lecture which are much more easier to solve with KVL. In fact this particular circuit can be easily solved with KVL as well. But some students prefer KCL because handling the equation is much more easier. Coming up with this equation is relatively easier and then it's easier to simplify as well. But if you have a lot of voltage sources um, then KVL can also be a good option. So we were supposed to find the current actually, so I forgot about that. This was just the voltage. So your current through the 5 kilo ohm resistor is simply the voltage divided by the 5 kilo ohm resistor and it happens to be 875 microamps. Let us now take a look at another practice problem from the study guide. In this problem we are being asked to calculate the current that passes through the 1 kilo ohm resistor in the circuit given below. So this is the 1 kilo ohm resistor that we are interested in. We only have one current source. And you can see that as the current enters into this particular node, it will split, okay, it will divide into two branches. And what I'm going to use in order to solve this particular circuit is the current divider rule. Current divider rule is pretty simple and it is ideally suited for scenarios where you have one total current entering into a node and dividing itself into multiple branches, okay? In this case, we only have to calculate, uh, we only have two branches, so it's relatively simple, but the general form of the current divider rule can be used for multiple branches as well. So I have Ix, which is the current that is passing through the branch containing the resistor Rx. So Rx is, in this case, the sum of the resistors in this branch, okay? So Rx is not simply equal to one kilo ohm, Rx is equal to one kilo ohm plus five kilo ohm. This is a mistake that students make because you gotta remember that when the current enters this particular node, if it is to enter in one of these two branches, it will see the total resistance. It will not only see the one kilo ohm resistor, it will see the one kilo ohm plus five kilo ohm resistor. Okay, so the total resistance offered by this branch is the series resistance of one kilo ohm and five kilo ohm. And if the current was to enter this branch, then it will only see 10 kilo ohm resistor. Okay, so it's an important point to remember. Although we are only calculating the current through 1 kilo ohm, but the current that passes through 1 kilo ohm is the same current that will pass through the 5 kilo ohm, because 1 kilo ohm and 5 kilo ohm are actually in series. And when you have a series arrangement, 
the current passing through the series series resistors is always equal to each other. So this current I will be the same current that passes through this R1 and R2 and up to Rn. Okay. So the way to use um, the current divider formula is that you have your IT, which is the total current entering this particular node. And in the numerator, you have RT. Now RT is the parallel arrangement of all the resistors that are connected in parallel to Rx. Okay, so in this case, we only have 10 kilo ohm resistor, but if we had a bunch of other resistors in parallel, so RT would basically be the parallel arrangement of all of those parallel resistors. And in denominator, you basically just have Rx plus RT. So now it's just a matter of substituting the quantities that we know. IT is equal to 5 milliamps, Rx is equal to 6 kilo ohm, as I just explained to you, and RT is equal to 10 kilo ohm. Just remember that this RT is a parallel arrangement. Again, I'll just explain this. It will take a couple of seconds to explain this. So if I had R1, R2, R3, and this 10 kilo ohm resistor, then this RT would be the parallel arrangement of R1, R2, R3, and the 10 kilo ohm resistor, okay? So now it's just a matter of plug and play. We'll substitute these values in this formula and then we'll be able to calculate the value of Ix. Once you substitute these values, you'll find that the current passing through one kilo ohm resistor is actually equal to 3.125 milliamps. Now this is the same current that is going to pass through the five kilo ohm resistor as well. In this lecture, we learned about KCL according to which the sum of currents entering a node should be equal to the sum of currents leaving the node. And we also looked at the current divider rule, which actually is just an extrapolation of KCL. So one of the things, as I mentioned during the lecture, that you have to be very careful while applying KCL is consistency with current direction. If you don't keep your current directions consistent and don't set up the equations properly, then you're definitely gonna get a wrong answer. And it is very easy to mix it up because if you're not neatly tracking your current directions, then you are bound to make mistakes. And potentially one of the answers that you solve with incorrect directions might actually be one of those A, B, C, and Ds. So be very, very careful with this point. If you found this preview lecture helpful, I am confident that you will also greatly benefit from the full course that contains over 150 lectures and covers all the topics that are found in the latest NCS FE Electrical and Computer Exam specification. You will also get access to tons of quizzes and mini-exams in this course that will help you get additional practice along with a bonus full-length computer simulated practice exam. This streamlined and well-reviewed course comes with an amazing 30-day full refund policy, no questions asked. On top of all this, I have also included a special discount link in the text section of this video. 